Gonna have to forgive me a little bit here. Riding the riding the struggle bus. Got uh, COVID. No energy. But I'll try and teach you something here. Coming up these little hips it's, it can be tricky to keep your shingles straight, so you're lining up top. But uh, a little thing you can keep in mind when you're doing them is <clears throat> you're obviously going to start off your eave, but that's hard to keep consistent all the way up. So you can use these as your reference. I know it's not a lot, but this these lines line up perfectly with that hip. So this will give you a straight run all the way to the top. So if you have this side filled in, you can use that as your guide because that will pretty much follow the hip all the way up. If you look from this point of view, that's dead straight, right? You go over here, that's dead straight. So use those lines to keep your shingles. They don't have to be perfect, right? You can make minor tweaks and adjustments as you go up, but I'll show you. I'll fill this section in here and then I'll start, I'll cut this out and then I'll start going up this hip and I'll show you that it works. my pants so I'm gonna try and do this as fast as possible <sighs> got some stuff going shingles do this they manufacture them like this these are shorter so when you land you kind of have to leave that up it's kind of annoying that's why I don't use the gun anymore to uh, set shingles because if this is you know and these are off and you get lots of runs your whole run could be off you know half an inch by the time you finish and that's when you get those big you know, you're, when you're looking down a run, instead of it being straight, it's, you know, super wavy. It's just not, it's not an effective way to shingle. I mean, I used to shingle like that because it was just pure speed, but now I don't, uh, don't bother. I get paid enough, take my time, do it right. As I nail the edge of the shingle. Fucking sticking. Oh, I did it again. Just shit in the bed today. Good times, good times. Yeah, fuck COVID. You know, I, I feel okay, but 
Um, I have no energy. None. I'd shingle this whole thing easy in a day, like with that back triangle all the way around. And between the rain and me being sick, it's taken me like three fucking days to get here. It's, it's uh, frustrating, to say the least. Um, wonder why I do this. I, it's just because I like to keep these nails within an inch of this, but sometimes I nail in, you know. You always seem to make more mistakes when you have the camera on because you're overthinking it. Which is fine. I mean, I don't mind making mistakes in front of anyone. Not perfect. Just don't tell my don't tell my girlfriend that I'm not perfect. I'm sure she already knows. Uh. This I'm just gonna run a line. I'll come up to this and then I'll drop set or I'll drop this because this is a short section. So instead of dropping the whole the whole run, I'll try and tie these up good. I'll, I'll make a video, but I'll just drop this section because it's so small, you'll never notice it. Um, you can do the whole run obviously, but there's really no point. I guess if it was more centered, I would do the whole run, but because it's, you know, shifted right, and this is only, you know, a 10 foot section, I'm not gonna worry about it. But yeah, so now that we got that in, move my stuff out of the way here. Knock this out. What do we got here? I'm glad it's not too cold out. It's a little chilly, but it could just be because I'm sick. Knock these out. Yeah, you can probably hear me breathing as I'm just out of gas. Ah, oh, fuck off. Everything is so much harder. I mean, I always, some of you are probably wondering why I do these double nails. Um, in Canada, or you know, northern states, when it gets cold, and then you're trying to cut these, and then, you know, this is gonna wanna rip, and it's so annoying, like when you're cutting, and like it catches the shingle, and then it fucking pulls your shingle up. God, it pisses me off. So I just started double nailing them all. And I mean, I try not to do it in the summer, because sometimes you can get your nails, your own nails in your way, especially because we use, you know, short cap. We're not using the really wide stuff, so you kind of have to keep everything really tight. But obviously, you know, you can catch your blade on them, and that makes things super annoying. I'll catch her. And, you know, I don't really care about cutting the hip. I've never, ever had to go to a roof to do a hip repair because it was leaking. That's just, that's not a thing. Um, I guess if the caps were missing, it could leak, but I mean, I don't, I don't worry about shit that doesn't really matter. Two different, I want to say that was a 612, that angle. This might be a 7, 7.5, I don't know. I didn't check. But now, see, hopefully, hopefully a half shingle covers that. That would be ideal. Otherwise, it's going to be a ton of waste. And I'm not going to piece everything in because that's just stupid. All right. So, and blast this in half and hope for the best. Uh, all right. Okay, 
that worked perfectly. That's fucking awesome. Oh, you see, uh, these shingles again, they're short. It's very annoying. Okay. So, you can start running up. You can use your Eve, obviously, for the first little bit. Yada yada. Yeah, see, when they don't sit, it just makes sitting is fucking annoying. But that's why I'm teaching you this trick. So if your shingles do start twisting, you have a reference. Yeah, like, see, that's very fucking... <laughs> when the shingles aren't cut grid, you have these huge gaps. It's just, I don't know, it's stupid. Let's see if I can't... Ah, fuck. Yeah, whatever. Just try and eyeball it, I guess. Your nails are flat. <sighs> so yeah, this is an okay shingle. I kind of get these weird tight positions. I'm six foot three, so I'm always kind of putting myself in funny spots. Yeah, so this is what I meant. Like, you can see the line, right? So you can see this coming through. It doesn't have to line up perfectly, and it's not going to because it's a different pitch. But you can get a reference of straightness, okay? Get a reference of straightness. If this shingle's out, right so say you start running up like that you can visibly see now that that is not square so I mean you can probably catch it with your eye you know some, some of you can but maybe you're a homeowner I can't don't have the eye for it yet you know so this is just another little tip I'll use. I mean, because not every section is this small, right? Like, this is a pretty easy spot to catch, but if you get a section that's quite a bit bigger than, you know, like, say this is this big, well, it becomes more problematic because then you're putting two shingles on. And when you put two shingles on, then all your keyways here are never going to line up because they're all twisting. So this way, you can kind of cheat it, a little, you know, from your existing roof. I mean, I hope it warms up a little bit because my fever that I had with the wind and the cold, it's not awesome. So yeah, so again, take a look. It might be twisting up a little even still, and I'm only just there. So I'll cheat this side down, square it up a little bit again, run my next one. Oh. Let's take a look. Because I mean, if you do have to cheat and move stuff, you can, but you have to do it in small increments. You don't, you know, you can't run a shingle up like this. Like it, it, you'll see it for sure. I mean, maybe not down here, like this low in the valley. But you have to be mindful of that. Like if you're trying to make a recovery move and you see, you're trying to make a recovery move, but you see these shingles are lining up nice. So then I get back and hopefully the shingles don't have any defects and I can just lay them flat in there and then they should stay relatively square the whole way up. But you see there's even these little bits, these little, little imperfections here, all of that adds up. And as you get higher and higher, they get more out and more out. So you have to just be mindful. Oh. 
Yeah, it's like this one again. It's fucking annoying me. And yeah, you could obviously just not use those shingles, but I don't pay for the shingles. I sub. So I'm not gonna just start burning bundles because, you know, I don't like something. So, I mean, I'm gonna trust myself for the most part. I'm not going to uh, go too crazy with checking everything. Uh, you know, if you get one that lines up, take a quick glance. Hey, how's that look? How's it? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want it to get too crazy. Hopefully, I gotta change out that stack. It was raining uh, yesterday, so I had to just seal it because it's not the right one. Uh, I was worried about water getting down in there, so I just fucking sealed the shit out of it and left it overnight like that. <sighs> yeah, these shingles are fucked. I mean, the shingles are fine, but just annoying when you're talking about consistency. I'm trying to keep everything straight straight ish see because when you're looking at this from a you're looking at this from a like if you're looking at here and then looking up there it, it doesn't look like they line up and it's it can throw people off because that's your reference point when you're coming up to a mean uh, ridge it's easier to get a reference point and I mean, worst case scenario, like if I wanted to, I could pull down from the ridge down here, mark a measurement, pull down from there, mark a measurement, and then you can kind of set a guide, right? You'd want to pull in here and then pull in at the corner, snap a line, and that kind of gives you, it would give you pretty consistent, um, like shingle height once you get to meet at the top. That's a way around it too, but um, I don't know where my tape measure is, so. I'm not gonna do that. When I get around to the front of this house, once we start getting into the stormers, then you're really gonna see a lot more, um, really gonna see a lot more of me, you know, pulling from the hips to get around these sections. Because every time you come around, like if you look at it right now, I can already tell that it's, it's they, you know, it just looks like shit. And while that's fine for some people, it's not fine for me. This is going this way, that is extremely going that way. That over there is extremely going that way as well. So once you get up over these ridges, like it, you can see how chunky these are. Like they got huge fucking gaps, everything. Anyways, but like, look at how bad that looks. And it's, I mean, it's, I guess, cause you know, they think the homeowner is not gonna come up here and look. Well, homeowner doesn't need to come up here. That's why we're here. Uh, it's our job to do the best job that we can. and. You know, stuff like this is just not acceptable. Everything should line up and everything should be even. You know, cheater courses like this, you know, on whole roofs trying to twist everything. I mean, it's just bad. Like it takes, it, it might take me 10 minutes to set all this up so I can pull down from all these lines and get all these runs the same. It might take me 10 minutes, but everything's gonna look completely uniform and it's gonna match flush to the hip. It's not, that's the only thing you need to worry about. If, if this is crooked coming up, right? It might be crooked, look crooked to you down here, but if it lands on the hip and your shingles are all aligned up top, so when you cap, you're not capping a full shingle over here and a half shingle over here. It, it literally takes you 10 minutes to fix all that. But people, I don't know, for some reason, they think they don't get paid enough, which is complete garbage because we get paid a lot of money to do this job. So, you know, when we're looking at these lines, I don't care if it takes me a little bit of extra time to get all these right, like I, I just don't care. I would rather this little section look uniform to anybody that ever came up on this roof and was like, oh yeah, these guys knew what they were doing versus, you know, looking like that front section, which is, you know, just awful.
You know, these old houses aren't framed perfectly square and you know, that's why we have chalk lines, that's why we have tape measures. You know, if you have the ability to do these jobs really well, um, you, you need to be doing that. I mean, it's not acceptable to, uh, you know, see this one again, cheat a little bit. It's not acceptable to just slam these on, I mean, and then, you know, or cock holes, like if you got low nails everywhere, you know, just going around caulking them is not good enough because the homeowner's not paying you to caulk the roof. They're paying you to shingle it. So your mentality going in should always be, okay, what can I do? You know, work the problem, work the problem. How can you, you know, get around this stuff? Like I said, a little drop row here is nothing. But if your whole front, the entire thing is messed up, all these rows are straight. All these rows down here are straight. There's no low nails anywhere. Everything is perfectly straight. You know, it's a big difference between having a 10 foot of one shingle low versus having a whole roof completely fucked. You know, and I make mistakes too. I'm not, I don't, I don't uh, do everything right the first time. Sometimes I put something on or sometimes I'm doing some metal work and I'm like, oh, you know, like that, I don't like the way that looks or, but you know, I'll take the time to fix it because at the end of the day, it is my name on it. And, you know, once you get to a certain level of it's like, okay, well, people know you for this quality of work, but then when you're, you know, cutting corners and doing things you shouldn't be doing, then people are going to be, you know, very annoyed, especially if you're doing, you know, constantly doing callbacks. You know? I think it's running on me again. Take a look. That's pretty good. See how these they cut these hips? Like they ran the ply like way over. I mean, I guess I could cut them down, but it's just the cap that's gonna look funny. Well, it won't look funny from the ground, but it'll look funny to me. And my opinion's the only one that matters. When it comes to this. Cut pretty good now, so I might not have to keep doing that nail. An extra gimme give, give nail there. What we got here. What we got here. What are we looking like? What are we looking like? Look fucking good. That's what we're looking like. Oh, fuck. You know, if you get a rollover or a little blow through like that, just put another nail in. Don't be fucking lazy. If you're wondering when I was talking about caulking low nails, I rip the shingle off and replace it if I if I low nail. I don't waste my time going around caulking things after. It takes me five seconds to replace a shingle, so versus ten minutes of me going around trying to find all my mistakes instead of just doing it fucking right the first time. Good guess there. Keep running out of shingles because I'm an idiot. Uh. My lunch there, looking good. There. Oh, I'm gassed. I haven't even done anything today. It's being six the worst when you're doing this job. Fucking annoying. You know, working in an office is nice because you're sitting there on your ass all day. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I'm not knocking office work. Just, this job is just substantially harder in every way possible. Well, except maybe mentally. I think some days I'm like, 
probably not even here when I'm, oh, what the fuck is that? I'm probably not even here when I'm working. I'm off in La La Land. See that line? Like I said, little oats one thing, right? I don't know where the edge of this fucking thing is. It's about right here. Where is it? Yeah. A little cheat. Keeps you on track, right? You don't want to be fucking eating shingles. Let's see how we're looking. Ugh. Ugh. Idiot. Ugh. See, now when I go to cat back, it's gonna sit, you want it to sit square. I mean, and again, I'm probably just being too picky because it's such a small area, but I think it's probably just habit, right? Like you just trying to keep, instead of slamming everything in, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to teach you how to do it. I, I wouldn't necessarily um, spend that much time doing it. Plus I'm sick, so I don't mind taking my time, like really taking my time to slow down to talk to you, to show you how to set these valleys. Um, but yeah, I mean, like everything looks uniform. There's uh, like a couple imperfections inside the valley because I said those sh the way that they milled those shingles are not perfectly f square on the bottom. And I mean, it's it's like that all over. Like, there's really I'm not gonna ship back all these. You know, this is 130 bundles in total, so I'm not gonna start shipping shit back to, you know, to, to it's cosmetic stuff. But it's again, it makes it more annoying. But yeah. So, if you want to set your valleys, set these hips, cut these hips, that's ready for cap. Now I got to cut that off, do the same on that side, that's ready for cap. You know, I'm just going to chip, chip away at this until it's done. In the next video, once I get everything wrapped up and I start capping, then I'll, you know, we'll go through and I'll show you how everything looks at the end, right? How that cap looks nicely on the ridge and uniformity is important to me. Um, yeah, see these gaps, this is another, this pitch would have been good for running these because it gives you a nice huge gap, but you kind of work with you want. I mean, if you get in, in around the five inch mark like this side is for your steps, I mean, that's probably as small as you could possibly get. You don't want to do anything smaller than that because um, you're gonna, it, if, if, if snow and ice are settling, it's gonna leak. You need to have that separation between the seams. There's a reason that, you know, six inches is approximately what you need across the board like all this, right? All hand cut, six inch. Obviously it's not exactly six inches because I'm not gonna measure everyone, but you can make a mark on your knife if you want to. You could take a grinder, you know, you could do a six inch if you're not used to it. You could grind a little mark into it and that'll tell you where your six inches is. You know, I think these are a little over. Um, so yeah, so that's how you tie those two in. And like I said, use these as your guides. You see how straight these are? Look, right off the edge of that shingle, boom. Off the edge of the shingle, boom. And I mean, I obviously would never do that if I was shingling, because I've, you know, you get a pretty good feel for it. But you know, if you're at home, you got like little sections like this, just take your time. Use the square edges at your disposal. Use these square edges and figure out where you're sitting. You know, the angles are all there. You just, you know, have to know where to look for them.